You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi everyone, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is an episode about delegation in business, and in particular it's for people who are starting a business or running a business. What I'd like to talk about is different approaches that are out there to delegation. Various entrepreneurs have different ideas about what the best way to go about this is. Um, And so what I'll do is outline three different approaches and talk a little bit about my experience with them and what I think the pros and cons of each approach are. And hopefully that can be useful. Just before we get started, I do want to say that my email, Jake at the Voluntary Life, was down recently. I had a problem on the server. And if you tried to contact me uh, in the last week or two, uh, please do email me again if you've got a bounce. Everything's now back up and running. So if you do have feedback or any thoughts about this or any of the other podcasts, by all means, email me. I'd love to hear what you think. So delegation. First off, the theme that you'll see in many books about entrepreneurship is how important uh, it is to delegate work rather than abdicating responsibility. So in other words, if you are building a business and you want to create value, then the worst thing that you can do is hire people and just tell them to get on with it uh, without actually taking responsibility for making sure that your business is growing healthily and that you're on track for whatever direction it is you're, you're taking the business in. There are many horror stories about problems that entrepreneurs have when they abdicate responsibility rather than delegating it. Um, Derek Sivers in his book Anything You Want talks about how he delegated the creation of an employee bonus scheme to employees and then he found out that all the profit in his business was being uh, redistributed to employees through the employee bonus scheme and he fell out with his employees when he cancelled this scheme or changed it in some way and had huge conflict resulting from it and and he really talks about the lessons that he learned in terms of delegating rather than just abdicating responsibility so what does it mean to delegate what how do you do it effectively the first of the three approaches that i'm going to talk about is described in the book uh, the e-myth revisited and it's a really uh interesting approach very much geared towards small businesses i've spoken about this book briefly before. It's by Michael Gerbner. I'll put a a link in the show notes. Essentially, the whole idea of this approach in this book is to create your business as if it were a franchise prototype. So you try and get yourself out of the operational role as quickly as possible in order to give yourself maximum freedom to be able to scale the business and step away from it in future. And when that comes to delegating work, what Michael Gerbner suggests is that you create a very clear set of processes like an operations manual for everything that goes on in your business. This is what you give employees to make it absolutely clear how things are done and what the standards are and so forth. He also suggests that you hire relatively inexperienced people who are willing to kind of learn the way that your business works, partly because he's got this idea that the way to grow your business is to have very clear procedures that everyone is working to. And in describing this model, he talks in the book about his experience of visiting a hotel, which he thought was really well run and uh, was, you know, really great customer experience and, and, and all that. And he asks the hotel manager, how do you achieve this? And the hotel manager shows him this detailed operations manual, which includes everything from you know how the cleaners clean each room and you know what part of the room they should clean first and last and so forth on the plus side it is clear that getting operations and procedures in place allows you to step back as the business owner so you don't get sucked into doing the work and it also means that your business is scalable on the downside it can become very bureaucratic and it is something that can get outdated you know if you write all these procedures in your operations manual and then the business grows and changes uh, you've got a lot of stuff written down about how people should do things that could easily get outdated and obsolete so that's the approach of creating detailed procedures for how employees 
do everything that they do. And, and when you delegate like that, you kind of define all the work yourself first and then sort of say exactly what employees are supposed to do. At the other end of the scale is a totally different approach, which is called the results-only work environment. And the idea behind this approach is that you don't care how employees do things. What you care about is results. And consequently, the best way to sort of get things done is to provide very, very clear targets or goals for what the results are that you need achieved in your business. And then you leave your employees completely free to achieve those results autonomously in their own way. And the kind of philosophy behind this approach is why should you care what time your employees come to work or whether they work at home or not or how they achieve specific tasks if they get the job done then you know if they work better at home in their pajamas then good for them you know that's fine as long as you get your goals met why should you care how anything is done and another aspect behind this philosophy is that employees will be able to adapt and update their techniques and methods and creatively find ways of, of um, getting the results done um, that managers or you as the business owner may not actually be aware of or be on top of. And so you may not have the resources as the manager or business owner to actually identify all these procedures nearly as well as the employees can in, in terms of getting their work done. There are various people who've talked about this approach and one of the early ones was uh, a guy in Brazil called Ricardo Semler who has been a very famous advocate for this type of approach and his, he has a corporation in Brazil that he's applied this approach to for many years and I'll put a link in the show notes to his book. Uh, this was also an approach that was tried at Best Buy, the Best Buy Corporation. And there is a book about how Best Buy went to a results-only environment, which is called Why Work Sucks and How to Fix It. Also, the book Rework by Jason Fried and David Heinemeyer Hansen advocates a similar kind of approach to uh, the way that they work at 37 Signals. And you can really see the advantages of a results-only type environment you know, you leave employees to creatively meet their targets in the best way that they can, and you focus on what outcomes it is that you need. The, the downside, I think, is that if you're not 100% clear on what the outcomes are, then the whole system isn't going to work. I mean, that's not necessarily a downside because that's a really good thing to know, you know, what it is you're trying to achieve. And, and in fact, Best Buy has since scrapped their results-only work environment I don't know the whole story behind uh, exactly why that's happening, but it is interesting to note that uh, it's been scrapped in one of the places uh, where it was supposed to be a really successful program. So that's the results-only work environment. The third type of approach to delegation is basically just outsourcing. And this is something that is talked about in books like The 4-Hour Workweek, the idea of having virtual assistants to do things for you. It's also talked about in, in books going way further back, like how I Found Freedom in an Unfree World by Harry Brown, uh, where he talks about essentially not employing people if you can at all avoid it and just hiring independent contractors to achieve specific tasks for you. Uh, the advantage here is that you keep your fixed costs as low as possible because you don't actually have employees. You just get people to do things on a contractor basis and that, again, forces you as, an, as a business owner or manager to really be clear about what it is that you need to get done and to provide very clear instructions in the same way as the results-only work environment, but with the benefit that you don't actually have the running costs of having employees. And if you have a gap in, in um, the need for specific tasks or whatever, then you haven't got employees that you have to kind of keep giving them something to do. The downside uh, could be that you're paying more for outside contractors. I think that's questionable, though, because you may pay more for hiring uh, independent contractors to do work for you. But in many ways, you could also argue that you get potentially more skilled people um, because they're specialists in whatever it is that they're doing. And I think you can argue that you know, if you buy into the logic of a results-only work environment where as a manager or business owner, you tell your employees 
just what it is that you need to get done and you leave it up to them how they achieve it, then if you buy into that logic, then the logical conclusion to that approach is why have employees then in the first place? Why not just hire contractors to achieve specific tasks? Because that's actually, if you like, the ultimate results only working environment. I had a lot of experience hiring contractors to do specific tasks like software development, system admin, business planning, lots of things like that. And that worked really, really well in my business. I also had the kind of e-myth model of having young, inexperienced employees who then were working to very clear systems and procedures. And we tried to involve them as much as possible in creating those procedures using a wiki and having everyone contribute to standardizing those procedures. I haven't experienced implementing a results-only working environment, but as I said, I kind of think that if you if you accept the logic of it, then focusing on hiring contractors makes more sense. However, I would be very interested to hear what you think. What's the best approach for your business and what, what do you intend to do uh, as you grow your business? Are you going to have uh, inexperienced employees that you give very, very clear procedures to? Or are you going to have a results-only work environment where you just tell employees what the results are and allow them to decide how to achieve them? Or are you going to focus on hiring contractors who you tell them what the results are that you want and what you're willing to pay for it and you get them to work specifically on, on tasks for you? So I hope that's helpful just to give you different approaches to this idea of how to delegate tasks and what the different options are for you. And I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.